This is my 2021 Harley Davidson Softail Standard. And yes, you read the title right. I'm thinking about selling this bike. I'm not sure, but in this video, I'm gonna go through what's going on in my head and everything I've been thinking about, which is a lot. I do really love this bike and every time I go out on it, I'm reminded of how much I do love it. So when it's sat in the garage for a couple of months or a few weeks and you've not ridden it, you forget what it feels like to start up the engine, get on the back of it and go for a ride. And after doing that today, um, you do just remind yourself that it is a fantastic bike. But there's a few reasons as to why I'm thinking of selling it. So for starters, I am a YouTuber and this is my YouTube channel. And as a YouTuber, um, I make motorcycle content and I don't know why, but every video I make with this bike, no matter what idea I come up with it, it doesn't get any views, unfortunately. So as a business asset, it is worthless because I don't know whether none of you are interested in it um, or whether it's just because it's a Harley. Um, tell me in the comments below what you think of this motorbike but I've tried lots of different ideas with it whether it be vlog style videos reviews long-term reviews videos about the exhaust um, but nothing seems to get many views so um, as a normal person if you're not a youtuber that might seem like a ridiculous reason for selling a bike um, but as that's now my full-time occupation it is a very serious thing and when I've not got bikes coming in from manufacturers or um, most dealers can't insure me because of my age, so I'll have to wait another three years to be able to do most bikes from those dealers, then I need to be able to film content with my own motorcycle. And if no one wants to see it, then um, I'm in a bit of a predicament. Part of the reason why I think this bike doesn't spark much interest is because of the way that Harley Davidson have advertised it. They've marketed it as the standard motorcycle. So that kind of puts it in your mind as this is the bottom of the range bike um, and it's the bog standard thing that, well, why would I be interested in that? Um, and they've marketed it as a base for customization, which, well, all Harleys really are a base for customization. It's not got any more options to customize it than any other Harley. Um, and in my personal opinion, this is one of the best looking Harley Davidsons that they've made in years, um, as it is. So for me, I've not really wanted to change much because apart from the exhaust and the seat, because I think it was fantastic looking as it is. I could make a series customizing it, but I'd probably spoil it and not like it as much. So <laughs> that wouldn't work. I have thought about doing some engine upgrades. It has got a stage one tune, by the way. So um, I probably haven't mentioned that yet, but yes, it's been stage one. So um, in terms of how it rides, it didn't actually make a huge difference between it being restricted for A2 because, because this is such a torquey bike, low down, it doesn't really make a difference. Up high, it does. So it does keep going for longer, but you don't find yourself going over 70 miles an hour that much on a Harley anyway. Do want to see more content with this bike and um, you want to see me go out on it more then just let me know what you want to see i know there are um you know a good few of you that do like seeing it but um like for example the other month i took it out for a pub lunch and things like that and did a more laid back vlog style video uh, which i really enjoyed doing and actually i thought it was a really good video uh, in terms of statistics it didn't do very well so if you haven't seen that video go back and watch it and let me know what you thought of it it's a much more laid back video and it's not a review style video that we normally produce uh, but i would love to be able to produce more videos of that style so if you're interested in that then give it a watch and see what you think but another reason why i'm thinking about it it's not just about youtube it's because, well, if I went for something like a Moto Guzzi, it would be about half the price of this bike. So I would free up a lot of cash in the bank 
um, and that could be used for other things. So when it's, especially over the winter, it's just mainly sat in the garage, um, then you start to think, well, do I really need it? Um, and being doing lots of videos on other bikes, um, you find that you don't really go out on it very much. So uh, you forget how much you like it. <laughs> but um, when I do need to produce content on it, then it needs to do well. So the Moto Guzzi seem to be more popular on the channel. So well, we've only done two so far. We plan on doing the whole range. So stay tuned for that. Um, I have asked to do a V85 TT, so hopefully I'll get one of those soon. And we'll try and do the other versions of the V7 and hopefully the V9 bobber as well. And I'm desperately trying to get lots more manufacturers on board. Brands like Kawasaki, Yamaha, Suzuki, we've never had a bike from. So although I've done one Yamaha from a dealership, uh, we've never touched a Kawasaki and we've never touched a Suzuki. So I'd really love to start doing those. So hopefully soon we'll get them on board. There, are, uh, another, there is another new manufacturer coming on board very soon, which I'm really excited about, a British bike. So let me know in the comments below if you know what it is, but that's really gonna be exciting that one. So I'm very much looking forward to that video. Try not to sound negative. I'm not complaining at you guys for not watching the content. I'm just uh, trying to find out what exactly it is about this bike that people don't want to see. It'd just be interesting to find out. At the minute, we've got a bit of a backlog, so we kind of shuffle around videos. So sometimes I might film a video one week and then three other videos go out before that one actually goes out two or three weeks later, which is great. We've got a bit of a backlog, which is fantastic. We've not been in that position for about two years, which is amazing. I was selling houses for two years, but um, I recently quit my job to do this full time. One of the reasons, well, this has always been what I wanted to do full time. It's just getting it to a position where it's uh, financially viable. But the more effort you put into it, then theoretically, the more you get out of it, which is um, what we're trying to do. But um, the housing market was just absolutely hopeless. There's, I, I had a new site in, uh, it was a new build site. It just opened and I was there for a few months, nothing sold. They were way overpriced because so they've obviously bought the land when um, the land was expensive two years ago. And by the time they get all the planning permission and everything in place, start building it, the housing market's crashed. And then they're trying to sell these houses at top dollar prices and they're just not worth that anymore. And secondhand houses are 100 grand, 120 grand less for more house. And they just couldn't see that. They said, no, it's the right price, it's the right price. They wouldn't listen to me. Uh, but I see now they've reduced them by about 40 grand. Uh, still haven't sold any. So I'm glad I left. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Let me know whether you think I should keep this bike or if you think I should sell it and get something else. And if so, what bike do you think I should get? The Motor Guzzi V7 is at the top of that list at the moment, but I am gonna be riding some other bikes soon, so they could sway me. Um, but it doesn't have to be a new bike, older bikes, anything that you think I would enjoy, let me know and I'll look into it. So that could be another series. If I do decide to sell this, um looking at what bike i should get next so give me some ideas in the comments below and we'll see you in the next video